Yo, what is going on guys, the boys is here, I'm bringing you guys to the Sim 4 tutorial, introducing you guys to basic motion designing, I really wanted to push myself this summer uh, to basically show myself how to motion design or basically get really good at it, and uh, also along the way I'm going to be teaching you guys, so this is probably my first introducing video to motion designing on my channel, so make sure you guys support it if you really enjoyed it, and uh, first off I'm going to talk to you guys for a second, like really really quickly, and then I want to tell you guys that my shirts is now available. I have three shirts available on Spreadshirt. You can go ahead and purchase them right now if you want to support me or really like my logo and like my designs. I have like three quotes or two quotes in my uh, just a regular old plain shirt with my logo on it. I'll, hopefully I put them on the screen right now so you can see them. And if you like them, you can go in the description below. It should be like the first link or something. You see like sesohq.spreadshirt.com. And you click on them. You can go ahead and purchase them in any different color. And uh, so yeah, I just want to get that out the way. So anyways, in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to use target cameras. Uh, basic keyframing and how to basically have some really smooth really nice you know rotations around your logo or uh, basically having really smooth you know just all around camera movements and it's a really cool way to be using target cameras and then like align the spline stuff and all that cool stuff we're gonna be teaching you guys and it's all around just basic stuff for you guys to basically enhance yourself or show an uh, improvement to your motion designs or if you have no clue what the hell you're doing this is definitely a tutorial to watch uh, so anyways let's get going uh, by the way, you can use MoGraph, MoTeX if you wanted to. Uh, I'm using just my logo for this example. I just, just simple, simple stuff. So anyways, let's get going. We're going to use the target camera. So to find a target camera is what, uh, should probably freaking say what the hell a target camera is, is uh, basically what the target camera does, has your main focus, like basically how you notice this little screen right here, and how the main focus is right now, the, the, the logo itself, because it's in the middle, right? So if I move this left and right, uh, oops, that's definitely not left or right. This is left or right. Uh, the, you can see the logo is not the main focus anymore because it's moving and it's not focused on the logo itself. What the target camera does, which is right on the second one in your target, uh, your camera, you know, group. What it does is allows your logo or your text or whatever you're using to have them like basically when you move your screen still have the logo be the main focus. Uh, so when you click on your target camera, you have two little things right here. You can just delete this little second one, which is car uh, camera dot target. Just delete it, and then you're gonna have basically your camera. So if you don't know what a camera is at all. Uh, basically, your camera has the basically the camera that has like this basically this little on and off button. Uh, black means it's off right now. If I put it white, you can see that it'll still be you know it's it's on. It fo it's focused on the logo right now. Uh, it's not like basically attached to it yet, but you'll see what I mean in a second. And then if I turn it off, you can basically free move it and whatnot, and just you know rotate around, see where things are. And if I click back now, if I turn it on again, it'll be focused on the logo again. So, anyways. To get it to focus on the logo at all times, you're gonna have this little blue little uh, little thing selection thing right here. Uh, you're gonna have basics and tags. If you see the word tag, you're gonna click on it. Go to target object, and this little group right here, your little empty space, this is where you just basically drag in your text or logo right inside. Or you can just basically click on this little arrow right here and just click on the selection you want. And you see right away it fixes itself and has the logo as the main focus. So now I can actually show you the example here. So if I try to move the left and right. You can see the logo is still the main focus. If I rotate it, the logo is still the main focus. And if I just wanted to turn it off really quick, this little camera, if I turn it off, you can see the logo, if I move left and right, is no longer the main focus, and it just freely does whatever the hell it wants, and turn it back on, and we're back to normal, having the logo be the main focus. So that's a really good thing uh, when you're working around with you know, basically rotating around things and whatnot, and you always want to have the logo be seen or the text, because that's the main purpose of an intro. Uh, so anyways, this here, down here, is basically a timeline. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm going to have settings for when you render it out in the description below. Uh, but anyways, if you didn't know, basically 60 frames is one second. If you have the setting, it's set to default having 30 frames per second. Uh, so anyways, you're going to change that. I'll show you. I have like a little guy as or a picture in the, the description to show you guys that your you know, render settings are not going to do it in the video. But anyways, yep, so that's basically what a second is. And this little keyframe, this is a little keyframe thing. You can have automatic keyframes. I do not, I really, you'll mess up. Trust me, you'll mess up if you use automatic keyframing. Don't be lazy. Do it by hand, manual. This is basically your manual keyframes. You click on it, this little blue thing comes up. You can see, like, so this little blue little keyframe comes up. So that I'll be like, here, this is where it starts, uh, type of thing. So anyways, let's use, let's use a spline to have the, basically the main focus. Actually, first, let's show you guys a quick example. So if I clicked on my camera, I went to zero frames, and then added a keyframe, and if I went to about, let's just say, 60 seconds, and uh, I like to rotate, you know, it doesn't really matter at all, but anyways, rotate the camera just a little bit if you want, and then just keyframe again. You can see how I move from, you know, basically straight on to basically a little bit to the right, and if I go back to zero frames per second, or zero frames per second, if I go back to zero, uh, the first frame, and if I went through just slowly, really quickly to 60, you'll see it just moves to the right, 
and whatnot. You can see how that works. That's basically like you know your basic keyframing. And if I go to like 60, and let's say I went to 100, and then like went around again, and I did this keyframe, you can see there's some cool little things right here. Just follows. You can see this little thing right here as well. Let's just go out of the camera, and you can see where the camera is basically just what it does. You can see if I just go like this, you can see the camera, which is that right there, just moving along this little path it has right now because we changed it and used some keyframes and whatnot. So anyways, that's what keyframing, the little basics to it is really quickly. But now I'm going to show you how to use keyframes and using a spline to have your, your camera movements be nice and clean. So to do this, you just right click on your camera, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and Align to Spline. And you're going to have a little second selection, little blue thing right here. And it's going to say Basic and Tag. This is the, the spline path right here is going to be where you drag your whatever spline you use. And we're going to go to the spline tab. We're just going to use circle for just an example. Click back on here. Drag it inside or just use the little uh, arrow button. Just click on it. And you can see right away. And what you want to do is automatically just click on your circle and change the rotation of the P to 90 so it's flat and it's ready to go. And maybe make it a little more bigger as well. And so, yeah, if I click on the uh, circle itself and I change the radius, that's how it's being able to zoom in and zoom out. So you can see how that works. And if I go back to here, the position is how it's basically going to rotate around itself. So you can see, that's how you get some really nice camera movements. If you want to use a circle, you can use a helix. You can use a freaking cogwheel and have some swivelly looking motion, uh, like a swivelly like motion camera. Uh, but that's that's basically a, kind of a style type of thing. So you probably use that if you wanted to, like have a little rumble theme. Uh, if you didn't want to do it in the editing program or something, just get that kind of idea when I'm talking about that. And like I said, click back on here, have the position at zero or whatever to 100. So to basically have that be keyframed, if you did not know, these little circle things right here are basically little keyframes. If I right clicked on it really quickly and went to animation, add a keyframe, or the shortcut for this instance is control and then click on this little circle, and it turns red. So you can see it's got a little keyframe now at zero. So let's say if I want to go to like 60 seconds and have this rotate in a full 360, it's going to pull this to 100, like so, and then uh, control, click on the keyframe again, and then you can see if I go to zero uh, frames, if I move it, it rotates in a perfect circle, like really nice smooth camera movements all the way around back to 100% position. If I go down, you can see the number goes down, etc. Also, if I click on the, uh, the circle itself, you can see all these little things, all these little settings also have keyframes. So if I want to change the radius along the way, so let's say if I just uh, keyframe at zero, let's say if while it's zooming or while it's going in, like so at 60 frames per second, let's say we zoom out or so a little bit and then we're going to keyframe it again so let's go back to zero and you can see it's going to basically zoom out all the way a little bit and then also do a full circle so that's basically both two things are keyframed and whatnot then you can have it zoom back in if you wanted to by keyframing it some more uh, anyways I want to show you with a, a helix as well because I thought that looked cool so if I go to my spline tab go to helix go to my little selection drag this or just click here go to helix don't forget to change the P position to uh, 90. And then we're just going to basically change the start radius. Going to move it down a little bit so you can see the circle. And as well as moving this a little bit like so. And then we're going to go to the position. You can see it's going to be able to like, do a little swivel down like a toilet bowl effect. So you can see it goes all the way down. All the, you can see the top view. That's what a helix does. It makes a little cogwheel. So if I just go out of the camera really quickly, you'll see what I mean. See, there's a little toy bowl basically. You also change the uh, settings and stuff to make it like more, either more spins and whatnot by just changing the end radius and the radius or the start radius and the end radius and whatnot. So if I just go to here, position, and move it up, you can see the camera is going down the logo and this little spline, little movement thing. I don't know, it's really, really cool. And it's just basically showing you guys some basics into using these little camera movements and whatnot. And uh, hopefully, this tutorial's purpose is which to basically show you guys how to use keyframes and uh, basically work around with using your know, splines for your camera movements for smoothness. And that's just a really main, that's a really main, right, like really main point right now because I really want to show you guys that because it's basically going to help you guys out throughout uh, basically our next tutorials throughout motion designing and whatnot. Also, I did promise I was going to do a little bit on the fracturing your basically your logo through uh, nit uh, what is it called Nitro Blast and Thrassy. I want to show you that as well. I don't know why I deleted the camera. I can just stay that. There we go. Anyways, so I have a little fracture here. This is I'm gonna hide this, and we're gonna put this up, like so. This is basically a little fractured uh, S logo. If I didn't know what fracture means, if you basically uh, 
uh, use Nitro Blaster Thrassy, it breaks the pieces together. So, and not together. If you want to use a, if you want to show you a Nitro Blast tutorial, I have a tutorial on it. And if you want to look more into that, I'll put the description below. Uh, put it in the description down below. Anyways, oops, excuse me, damn. And I go to MoGraph, Effector, Random. And I'm gonna put this or leave it like so. And you can see, right when the strength is at 100 on the random, uh, it breaks all together. So we're just gonna go with my, to zero strength. Uh, zero strength. And you can see it's perfectly solid. If I put the strength up, it goes and breaks. Uh, so you can see it has a little keyframe here, so you can actually do some cool things with it. Let's just say if you want to put it at zero, keyframe it, and uh, or let's say if we have it at 100%, and then keyframe it again. There we go. And I'm gonna have it. Oh, I, should, I should have it zero, but it really doesn't matter. You can just move it like so. Zero. And I click by my random. And let's go. If I go to like 60 frames per second, change this to zero, and then keyframe it. You'll see. It goes from broken to solid, and then you can do some cool things, maybe with the toilet bowl. Uh, I said toilet bowl, but the helix, obviously, but the toilet bowl effect. Maybe have it rotate while it's basically going together like so, and it's just all around cool things. Let's just let's try to show the example. Uh, helix, click, put it in here, change this to 90, apply, and then let's go ahead and show you guys. See something like this. Oh, it looks really really cool. You can slow it down by just uh, basically having the the keyframe be farther away. So it's just really 120 or so. So it'll be two seconds to while this happening while this is happening. And you can see, I don't know. I think it looks pretty pretty cool. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I showed you guys about keyframing using uh, splines as a motion, like smooth camera movements and whatnot. Hope you guys really enjoy. Hope you guys learned something and hopefully I didn't lose you. But this is probably like totally new to you uh, as it is also to me. So hopefully we'll clean things up as well. And I'll you know show you guys as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like I said, my shirts are off off for purchase in my store. You can see the description uh, down below for the link. Uh, 200 likes on this video equals a secret giveaway in the description below. And I'm really hyped for summer. Mine starts on Monday, June. I think it's June 15th. Yeah, there we go. Anyways, I can't wait. I'll talk to you guys later. Switch you out. Peace.